All right, today we have the Anko meat grinder and a lovely citrus vodka. Now I'm trying extra lighting this time as well, so if there's too much lighting or if it doesn't work, just let me know, I might dial it down a bit. I will actually adjust one of them right now because that's really getting on my nerves. There we go, that was like staring into the sun and now it's not. In fact, that looks a lot nicer on the camera too, not getting that reflection. Any ideas you have for home amateur lighting? I'm all ears, but right now we're all meat. That sounded weird. Anyway, I've bought this a while ago, like most things in my life. This will be, I don't know, my fourth, fifth something uh, meat grinder. I like to grind meat. No euphemisms there. I like to eat meat. I like to cook meat. I like to explore the different options available. And there are many, many different ways to grind meat, to spill your shit everywhere, and to cook meat. If you jump over to America's Test Kitchen, and have a look at What's Eating Dan. He explains the Maillard process very well. Uh, there is also some good Binging with Babbage videos that cover it. There are uh, Adam Ragusia, I think that's how you say his name, videos that cover it quite well. It's really whoever you prefer watching, but cooking meat can be done in a lot of different ways. And it's almost always all excellent. The key things are knowing when you do and don't want the Maillard reaction, knowing when to salt it, knowing what sort of meat to use, specifically what sort of fat ratio you want normally. And for me, I usually want a high fat ratio because I'm either making sausages or mince, and I use the mince for burger patties. So I thought I'd try, oh, it's got some suction cups on it. Two suction cups on the bottom and two rubbery feet. That's pretty good. It says it's 300 watt. That's really not gonna draw much apparently, but we'll find out. Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of them. I'll link to them all below, but I've got a plastic Baccarat one, which is like a hand meat grinder. I've got a really old school Spong one, which is still a hand grinder, but it's, I don't know, from the 50s or something, I think, or even earlier, and that's metal. Um, I've then got the, where did I get my other meat grinder? I got some, I don't know where I got my other meat grinder. I've got a meat grinder that isn't Anko branded. I don't know where I found it. I'll put the link below. My memory's not that great. And, um... They all seem much the same. So we essentially, maybe my other one is Anko, Anko branded and I just own two now and this is the newer one. Uh, either way, it's actually held up really well. I've been using it for a long time, it's not failed yet. This thing's smaller and obviously much lower power, but built quite differently. So I'm gonna try it out. It's um, got all the usual attachments, including sausage stuffing knobs, which are always very handy, but we don't need to try those out today. What we're gonna do, has very light aluminium, but it looks like it'd be quite easy to clean, is, um, uh, yep, piece it all together. So then you put in your little, I even forget what that bit's called, the auger. You put in your blade on top of the auger. You pick your bit. Now there should be a few bits in the box. Um, my other one has a little storage compartment. This one doesn't, oh, oh. Storage is in the ass. There's a, there's a meme reference there. There we go, so it comes with one other one. Um, ooh, three mil or five mil? I'm making mints and I'm gonna be making sausage rolls, so I'm gonna go with the three mil for this one. So line it up, screw her on, make sure she's nice and tight. Dump that on top, oh, that's nice. All right, I gotta point this out. The fact that this is metal, I quite like, even though it's a thin, crappy metal. You can see here, these little notches, they're holding it really firmly. The other plastic one that I've got, uh, which as I said, I'll link to below and you can watch the video, I can't even remember the quality of the video, is plastic up here and there's nothing to hold on. So actually, it's got a lot of wobble and turn. This is an interesting design. You've got some other feeding mechanism here that I'm sure, oh, that's to push into it. Uh, that's, yeah, that's to feed into it, but oddly it's got a lid. And it's got a locking lid, which I don't fully understand the point of. But, I mean, maybe you store your herbs and spices in there. Who knows? I'm not one to judge. What we're going to do, though, is plug it in, see if it draws to 300 watts. Uh, since it's only 300 watts, and I think it was like 15 bucks, you know, one of those Kmart specials, I'm going to give it a bit of a challenge and see if we can't probably kill it. If it doesn't die, I'm going to use this quite a bit. So off the cuff, let's turn it on. It's got forward and reverse, which is good. Oh, that's the release button. It's got forward and reverse. We'll see how much it draws. And you probably should clean it out first, but behind me, I don't care. <laughs> that 
That is loud as fuck. Uh, it drew 300 watts though, as we could see. So it does as it's told. First thing we're gonna try then. Mm. This is gonna be a problem. I didn't consider it. It's a bit lower than my other ones. The other ones fit into that. I'll feed it into, oh, no, I'll save that one for now. Let's get another bowl out. Sweet. We'll feed it into this one and we've got a variety of things to feed into it. First thing we'll start with is, which side am I going? Two different types of porterhouse uh, beef. So I've got it cubed and I've got it, uh, just strips of it. They're about half inch or two and a half centimeter cubes and strips. Cubes are usually best. Strips are, can be challenging because the sinew gets wrapped up and stuck in it. So we'll do the cubes first, see how she handles it, keep an eye on the current, and then we'll move on and give the strips a go. Then we'll do my favorite method. All right, that went through really easily. I can only judge the noise by assuming that it's got a really high gear ratio in there. So it only needs 300 watts and it's really like it's screaming at you because you've, you might have like a 20 or a 30 to one gear ratio. So the org is moving nice and slow, but it's got a lot of torque behind it. We're gonna find out that's for fucking sure. All right, strips. <laughs> It had no issue with that whatsoever, which is excellent. So now we'll make it a little bit harder. We still don't know how much sinew is getting caught up in there yet. So let's check that first. I'll rinse my meat hand and have a look at what's going on just behind here. See if it's really getting caught up. And just for a little bit of safety, because that thing sounds like it will mess your day up if your fingers get into it. That's looking pretty good. All right. And what's going on here behind the blade? See, this is also a fairly good gap in the auger. It's got a lot of room to actually grab the meat. So I was cutting it before, judging from the online pictures at how big that would need to be. You don't want to cut chunks that have, you know, two dimensions that are bigger than the auger because it's just not going to be able to grab it and feed it. So not too much sinew. Oh, there we go. Not too much sinew actually grabbing and holding around there. So, so far, so good. This also has a six-sided, what's that? Set no, it's set to seven. Oh, set. Pent. Hexagon. God damn it. Hexagons are the best hexagons. I should know that. Uh, hexagonal head. So it's holding quite firmly, and it looks like this face is quite sharp against the blade. So there's not actually much room for sinew to build up, and that works in our favor. So far, I'm quite impressed with this little cheap thing. Let, oh, let's see if it dies or if we can kill it. We now have some par frozen steak. So this has been freezing for about 25 minutes now. It's a little bit firmer, not much, but I mean, I could even freeze it up more than this, but I'm not going to. It's still got a bit of wobble left. This usually minces a little bit better, especially if you're gonna do it in a food processor. So let's chuck it in, feed this bit of excess through, see how she does. Plugging it back in always helps. It really didn't seem to care that it was a little bit frozen and it kind of sat uh, maybe between 260 and 320 or so watts, which I think is pretty good. So now we'll clean it out with something a little bit crunchier. See how it goes with that. Let's grab a whole carrot. Now, normally you might want to shave your carrot. I'm not going to. I'm going to take the top off and the end. The worms can have that and it's just gonna have it. I 
really didn't have to push the um, the pusher into it then. I did it because it was bouncing around a fair bit, but it ate it without a problem. So I'm gonna leave this mince like that for a minute. A um, bit of carrot in your meat's really good. I'm also, oh, you know what, before I forget, since I'm gonna be doing sausage rolls with this, I might as well just send a bit of bacon in with it. Let's go. Oh yeah, four sheets of middle cut. I think that's middle, short cut, sorry. And I'm just gonna post it into the hole like that. <laughs> It very happily ate that bacon. So happily, I'm just gonna give it a little bit more. I really do like my bacon too. Do not ever shove your fingers in the top of that thing. I kind of did then, it was turned off at the time. If there's someone else near you, definitely don't do it. But even when it's turned off, you just shouldn't do it. It's, it's not safe, especially if you've got long fingers. I'm. I look like I'd be fairly safe there, but it's a, a hard part of the body to repair, as most parts are. So now, let's knock it up a notch. We've got a bit of carrot, a bit of bacon, and that's gonna be fine for this next, next little recipe we'll put through. Bit of chicken. Slightly different through the blender. If it did pork, it should do chicken, but this is a bit of a precursor, and you'll see what I mean. So let's send this through. This is definitely louder, but way faster than the uh, other mincer, which I'll link to below as the first link. I'm actually quite impressed. The other mincer I just remembered actually is a Healthy Choice or Lennox MM30. And it cost me like 70 or 80 bucks. This thing's smashing it, but we're gonna have a bit of a decider now because I do mince things that you shouldn't sometimes. And you know, you might wanna make some pet food or something, you might want some some cartilage or even some chicken bone in there, which can be good for your pets, I think. I'm not too sure I don't have pets. Uh, it might kill it, it might not. For this though, I'm gonna chuck, where are they? Some glasses on in case a few shards get sent out. And I'm just gonna put this pot uh, that way up in the way there, just in case they really splinter out in that direction. So I'll go the cartilage and then the two bits of bone and we'll see what happens to it. And keep an eye on that too. Didn't look like the cartilage was an issue. Now for the first half of the bone. It completely minced that bone up. I'm quite impressed. Uh, it definitely slowed down, but it really didn't seem to have an issue in the end and that's looking pretty good. Let's, uh, by the way, this is really good if you put it in like a cotton bag in a soup. Now that that's minced up and you've got all that marrow and blood, that's a lot of flavor in your soup. There's bone in there as well, so you don't want to actually let it out in your soup. Uh, but if it's in, you know, cheesecloth or something where no small bone shards can get through, you're right as rain. For the most part, don't take my word for it. You shouldn't choke on anything that's gone through there anyway, but cooked bone is not good for you. So get that out of the way. That's of no use to me. The compost can have it and we'll just have a look. What sort of state this is in now? All right, so, blade's looking nice and clean. There's a little bit left around the auger, but it hasn't, you know, hasn't got any sinew built up around it. It's actually in, yeah, in decent condition. Let's pop this blade off. The blade does grip a bit, but that, oh, is also a good thing. You can see there's a bit of, actually, there is a bit of oil built up in there, and I don't know if you'll be able to see but there is a bit of rotation, like it's cammed out just slightly. Maybe by 1.5, 2.5 degrees. You kind of expect that, but it means this isn't gonna be a long-term machine. Um, it's not gonna be an everyday use machine. It's, come on camera, sort your shit out. It's not for a kitchen, you know, like a commercial kitchen. But that's all that was left in there. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with this. It held onto the ground, it didn't wobble about, it was fairly cheap, it didn't hesitate when there was bones. 
It consumed 300 watts like it said it would. Came with two different size adapters, came with a sausage stuffer that we got there, which I'll definitely make use of. It wins. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Gonna keep using this and probably make some sausages soon until it dies. Till next time folks, take it easy. Don't forget to wash your hands. Like, subscribe, hit the little bell below if you want notifications of new things when they come out. Sometimes they're good quality, this thing's like good quality, they're not always this good. Uh, I also have two other channels. There is up, sorry, there's um, Platinum Gaming or Platinum Games and Tinkers. Gaming is self-explanatory. Tinkers is all electronic, um, you know, like tearing these things apart from the inside out and doing some IoT stuff. There is also Up Paddles Creek if you like gaming, which is me and some mates playing some games and basically acting like drunken dickheads. Otherwise, I appreciate all the feedback. I appreciate good vodka. Any comments, let me know if you want to see something else put through this. Don't be stupid, like, you know, not a live mouse, that's cruel. It's got to be a dead mouse. Otherwise, catch you next time.